Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I show you the new version of Aurora HDR2. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Sergio Amelie. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful, the amazing city of Paris, France, and Los Angeles, California. I make one to two tutorials per week. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click here to get the raw file for this episode. All you have to do is go to photosearch.com, sign in. Once you are logged in, sign in, then the link that's below this video will function and will give you the raw files. All right, great news, guys. Aurora HDR from McFarland is coming up with a new version and I love it. It is from far, far, far the best HDR software on the planet. That is what I use when I want to do HDR. And let me show you the new features and how cool the software is. Here we go. All right, mesdames and messieurs, so I'm happy the new OHDR 2017 is out. Uh, make sure uh, if you want to upgrade or buy the software that you use the link, which is ohdr.com slash photo search to get a special price, which is a pre-order price. And I've been playing ar around with it for a few weeks and it's really, really cool. I've been saying for months that Aura is the be best AGR software out there. And I want to show you again why that is. It's Mac only for now, but I know a Windows version is coming next year. But in the meantime, if you're a Mac user, you got to check the upgrade. Or if you've, you're a Mac user, if you've not bought it, you got to check it out. It's really cool. So, for example, I'm going to show you my workflow. This is three photos that I shot. And this is really personal. This is three photos that I shot in Amiens a couple of days ago. I had a great sunset. Uh, it's a very nice town. It's got a lot of very whole, uh, old houses in the north of France. And um, I'm going to show you the, the workflow that I'm using. The first thing, I always do a little bit of Lightroom before going into Aura. For example, I want to, uh, I, my sensor was really bad on this one, so I have a few spots that I want to handle. So what I do is I just do that on the first photo really quick. No big deal, but you know, a few spots if you want to make sure that you have everything, you can use the visualized spot. That's the first thing that I do. The second thing that I do, I like to give it a little look with the white balance. So on this one, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to uh, shade and add a bit of magenta. If you follow my stuff, you know that I'm crazy about shade and magenta when it comes to nice sunset. All right, so then I'm going to select all three. I'm going to click synchronize, check all, synchronize. So now, the spot removal has been done, and the um, actually you forgot one spot there, but that's fine. I I can always come back to it. You know, if you forget something, you just go back to it and clean it up, and just because they're all three selected, click on synchronize. Then, because I did something in Lightroom, it's not anymore a RAW file. If I go to Aurora, so I'm going to right click, I'm going to click on export, and I'm going to use. You see, that's the old version, Aurora HDR Pro. And that's the new version, Aurora HDR 2017. I'm going to use dot tiff with Lightroom adjuster. What that's going to do is basically take into account all I've done into Lightroom, create super super quality TIFF file, and send them over to Aurora HDR. Is the launching interface? You can see that we have the three photos there: the minus two, the zero, the plus two. Uh, I can click on alignment, but I was on the tripod, so I'm not going to do that. You have, you can click here for additional settings, and this used to be here. It's not there anymore, which is a ghost reduction. In case you have stuff that mo that moves or chromatic aberration, I'm not going to turn that. I'm not going to turn on alignment. It's all good to go. I'm going to click on create HDR. One of the most amazing new feature in OR HDR is that they have now included in the preset the Sir Germany preset. No kidding, you have Trey Radcliffe, Captain Kimo, and Sir Germany. So you got my presets. And uh, this was just a joke. It's a cool feature because I really like my preset. I'm going to show you on this photo how I use them. Uh, basically, preset is, you know, is different settings of all the options you have in HDR in, um, in, on tone mapping. And the thing is, and the key important point to think is you have to think in terms of layers with Aura. You will see in the second one I mean. So that's my basic layer. I can go to Photo Search Basic as my basic layer, but it's a little too saturated. I have another one. This is my two basic layers, Photo Search Basic and Photo Search Bright. On this one, I want a really kind of cool, uh, not too over the top uh, HDR look. You know, I don't want something like, uh, you know, let me show you, I've got like some crazy ones like this, like photo surge local details. For example, this preset is only meant to be used for coming out some details. It's awful what it does on the sky. So let's use the photo surge bright as the basic layer. Okay, now if we go through uh, 
the different settings. The first one is the HDR look. If you go on the right, it's going to really give an HDR sort of draw type of look, which I personally don't like. I, I used to like it years ago. I'm kind of away from it. But if you go on the left side, you go on the more natural, which is what I want to go for this one. I mean, this scene was crazy. The sunset was one of the best I've seen this year. So it is truly, a, a, you know, an impressive sunset. But I still want it to look kind of natural. So I'm going to go here on the left side. So that's my basic slider. Now, the cool thing about the software is that if you click here on plus, not only you have the surgery preset, but you also have new options here. Uh, you can add, for example, HDR brackets. You can add, you could use the software just to do digital blending without using the HDR engine by adding your brackets and mixing them up. That's not what I'm going to do in this one. I'll show you this in a later video. You can add texture, you can add the original image back on. I'm going to go to adjustment layer. I'm going to show you how to work with my presets. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my photo search sunset look. I'm going to click on the photo search sunset look. It's going to make a crazy sunset look on the entire photo. But if I take this little brush, which is here, and I just click here around the sun, I only get that effect not everywhere, but just here and not completely. Check it out. Before. And so that's a layer. And after. Uh, you can even lower the opacity. That is something you could do before. But the whole algorithm the whole method they're using to use the SDR is different it's faster it gives more natural result it's even better i really like it so that's with you know that's just bringing back some of the sunset look on the photo and i didn't bring it back everywhere and not at 100 percent because by default my brush is at 50 percent so let's carry on let's add another layer adjustment layer and this time i'm going to use another surge remedy preset i'm going to use the one i showed you before which is the uh, detail, the local detail preset. I'm going to click it. It's going to be crazy. I don't want this. I got my brush. I'm just going to, I'm going to right click. I'm going to make my size brush a bit smaller, and I'm going to just brush the details on the house, just on the house, not even on the reflection. I'm trying to bring back details just on the house. Check it out. Before, after. It's subtle. It is subtle details, but it really makes the photo. I don't think you can see it very well on the video, but it does really make a difference. And I like to play with, you know, fuzzy clouds here, very high detail here. Here it is, the very high detail is. And last but not least, let's add one more layer, the adjustment layer. And I'm going to go to another photo search preset, which is this one I'm going to, that I call the final touch preset. I'm going to click on it. And the final touch preset is going to add a vignetting and a bit more contrast and different things. I think it's too much on this one, so I'm going to lower the opacity and boom. And just add a little bit of final, final touch. So that's how you can use the different presets that I made to, you know, you just look at the preset, but don't look at it like on the entire photo what it does. Just look what it does to a specific part of the photo. So that's the final result. I can click apply. Let's jump back over to Lightroom and let's do another one. Let's do this one. Um, this one is uh, is this beautiful church that you have in Amiens. It was a, it was a bit later on during the day. So this one, I'm going to throw in directly the raw file. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to export and I'm going to go into open original image. So you don't have to do the workflow that I showed you before of, you know, playing around with the, um, you know, with the raw files and then getting them out as a TIFF. You can use the original DNG file. So let's jump this over to Aurora. We have the launch here. I'm going to click no option, no alignment, no additional settings. Just create HDR because I was on a tripod. All right. So this one, I left the, uh, the different uh, sensors dust. We'll have to tackle that later on in Lightroom. So let's go through the different thing. Let's look at Photo Search Basic. I think it kind of looks cool on this one. I don't like what it does to the sky. It's the sky is uh, has too much detail. It's very HDR looking. So maybe on this one, I'm just gonna. You can use one of my presets and just tone down the HDR look, which is the first slider now on our HDR two, and this is a whole brand new. Uh, powerful method let's put it this way uh, on this one i think i want to add a little bit of uh, cold maybe yeah just a little bit you know to get a more blue feeling to go a bit reverse from the other photo but there's a lot of things i don't like about it i don't like the sky at all how it is uh, maybe i'm going to lower the overall exposure of the photo so 
uh, let's carry on. Let's see if we can do better with the sky. So I'm going to click here on plus, and I'm going to click here on HDR bracket, and I'm going to try to uh, bring back uh, the underexposed photo. The underexposed photo is going to have a lot of uh, detail from the sky, but much more natural. So let's see if we can mix that up. So I'm going to take my brush, and by default, uh, the whole underexposed photo is there. But as soon as I'm going to click, it's going to go away and bring back uh, the normal exposure. So now I'm mixing up HDR with actual, uh, you know, non-retouch wall file. So that's something completely new, you know. But I still think it looks kind of, uh, let me show you the before and after on this. It's processing a lot. So that's the before, a little too crazy to me. You know, I love to do HDR, but I don't like that it screams it's HDR. I want it to look awesome, but not to be, you know, over the top necessarily. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I like that. So I brought back some of that. Now I'm going to do the same thing here in the water. I'm going to go click on plus, HDR bracket, and this time I'm going to take the overexposed photo because I want to bring back some of the water from the overexposed photo uh, because in the overexposed photo, the water is a lot more silky because it was a lone exposure. So same thing, I'm just going to brush it, brush it in, and I'm brushing back a little bit of this sort of uh, overexposed and more flat water. Okay, I still don't like what the cloud is looking like, so I'm going to click plus. This time I'm going to take adjustment layer, and the adjustment layer, I'm going to use the photo surge clouds because the photo search cloud is meant to diffuse. I think one of the biggest mistakes people do when they do SGR is give a lot of details, a lot of shadows in their clouds. If you do that, uh, they look so unrealistic that it, for me it ruins the photo. I used to do it a lot, so I'm not blaming anybody because I was the number one in the world doing that. So now I clicked on photo search clouds and it's diffusing the clouds, but it's too much. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to brush it and I want to bring back a lot of diffusion here. So I'm just brushing it in a couple of paths. Okay, now they're much more diffuse and I like that a lot more. Okay, I'm gonna click here on plus, adjustment layer, and I'm gonna go to uh, my final touch. So, you know, use my preset really not for the overall, overall look of your photo, but just from some part of it. So I'm gonna click here on final touch and, uh, and see what it gives me. Final touch is too much. So I'm going to lower the opacity of final touch. Okay. I still don't like what it what's happening here in the sky. I think there's a lack of color here. So you know what? I can just keep on adding adjustment layers. And that's the cool thing about it. You can just add layers after layers after layers. Okay. And I'm going to go into the photo surge sunset look. Okay. Which is kind of crazy. And I'm just going to paint brush back a little bit of the magenta here. What I'm trying to achieve is a sky that's kind of blown away with some blues and some, uh, you know, it's just a different look, but very diffuse, which is, I think, what I have here. Maybe I'm going to bring some here a little bit. Okay, now I'm starting to like it. Okay, I'm going to click one more time on adjustment layer, and now you can just go into the different settings and just really finalize it. I think the shadows on this one is a little too dark, so I'm going to open up the shadows a little bit. Now that I've done all my basic things, I'm, I'm going to bring down my blacks to add a bit of contrast. Open up shadows even more. And the good thing is you're always working on three different exposures. So on three super wall files, you know. Uh, so that's kind of cool. And I think I like that. Uh, now I'm going to finish up the photo in Lightroom. Uh, actually, you know what? I think the sky is a little too bright. It just screams too bright. So that's fine. I can just add one more adjustment layer. Okay, and this time just for the sky, I can go, for example, take any of my preset like uh, Photo Surge Basic, for example. And I'm just going to lower the highlights on this one. I'm going to lower the highlights. I'm going to lower the exposure. Okay, it's going to do that for the entire photo. And I'm just going to brush back here, just here, a little bit in the sky here. Voila, now we got a, a still a diffuse, but a more interesting sky. And you just, you know, I have retouched this photo in so many different ways, but I wanted to get like a sort of blue-orange kind of look into it. So 
Now I'm going to click Apply. And instead of starting in Lightroom, I'm going to finish in Lightroom now, now that I've done this. So let's jump over to Lightroom. Um, first, I want to show you that was the first photo that we did. And now the second photo is going to come in. So the photo is back in Lightroom. Uh, pretty cool result. I like the sky. It's really got this sort of HDR amazing, but not, you know, with not too much HDR look. And that's a look that I like. I might add a little bit of minus clarity just to make it even more diffuse. And I'm going to take out the uh, spots that there is in the photo. Uh, I would do that really fast. I would spend more time if it was really for print because there's so, so a lot of uh, small... I was It was the end of the day. I still had a lot of sensor da dust there. This one is not really out. I would do a better job, don't worry, if, I, if it was for me. I just don't want to bore you with that. Uh, one more thing that I would do on this one is I would add a little more contrast. Uh, maybe you'll put up the shadows a tiny bit. I like to do a little bit of a double processing. Uh, and then, you know, maybe just bring down the blacks. And I would, of course, add some sharpening. So like 66 of sharpening with 50 of radius uh, and about 10. 10, 15, 75, that's my formula, 75 of sharpening, 15 on noise reaction, and a bit of masking. And uh, one thing I would absolutely do is I would click auto on upright to make it straight, and voila, crazy, crazy photo, ready to hit the home page of 500px. So that was one photo uh, that we did, and that's the second photo that we did. Uh, crazy! I really like you know this sort of very saturated look, but it doesn't have doesn't scream HDR completely. Anyways, that's a style that I personally like, and I find that a lot of people on this planet do like it too. One more option that I didn't show you, which is really cool, and that is the batch processing. When you launch OR HDR by by itself, you can click here on batch processing, and then you can load images and uh, Aurora batch. I can even actually just click here on Aura Batch and click on Open. And it's going to look inside of uh, this folder and determine all the bracketing by itself. Here it is. So you got all the bracketing and uh, continue. And what's really cool, so now you can, I can, you know, decide where I'm going to save it, if I want to do alignment or not, uh, what kind of presets. So I can use the Trey Ratcliffe, Captain Chemo, Serge Ramelli preset, basic, all the basic presets. I'm going to use the Serge Ramelli. And I'm going to use Photo Search Bright, and you know, then you can also determine which file setting you want it to. Uh, so I I like to use Stiff, LZW as a compression, and 16-bit to get the best quality with the color profile Pro Photo RGB, resize to fit original, so meaning no resizing, and you know, you can even give it a name. I like to use the suffix and add the, the word rendered, and up you click on process, and you're good to go. Voila. There is many other options that you show you, including the luminosity mask, and there's a whole bunch of other things. That's the first flavor, as the amuse-bouche, as Trey Radcliffe would say, of OR HDR2. I hope you like it. I really think this is one of the best, if not the best, HDR software on the planet. Voila, check it out.